Dear brothers and sisters, what I want to do is I want to just talk about the severity of the position of our parents that we may or may not really understand. So I hope that uh, to remind myself and to remind you of that today, may Allah have mercy on them and on us. Bilal Walidain, kindness towards parents, is a characteristic of the believer. Al Hassan al Basri, rahmatullahi alayhi, defined, he defined it saying that Al Bir is obeying the parents in everything that they ask so long as it's not disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rukuq, which is the opposite of Bir, is to disown your parents, but in a way that you deny them the goodness that you have. And by the consensus of the scholars, being respectful and obedient to one's parents is an obligation. Ibn Hazm, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said that being respectful to one's parents is an obligation. And he cited the ayat in the Quran, and your Lord decreed that you should worship none but him, and that you should be dutiful <coughs> to your parents. Uh, to better understand it, the scholars actually laid out some conditions. If you want to see, or you want to check whether or not uh, you're actually fulfilling this obligation, then there's some conditions you can start by looking at. Number one, he mentioned that he or she should place the pleasure of his parents above the pleasure of anything, anyone or anything else, including himself, of course, except the pleasure of Allah, uh, but in anyone, including himself, his wife, or his children. Number two, he should obey them in everything they command or forbid him, whether it agrees with his desires or not, so long as it, it's not in, in, in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, they mentioned that he should present them with anything he feels they desire, whether those parents ask for it or not. He should present it with kindness, and he should present it with mercy, understanding that no matter what he does, he will have shortcomings when it comes to fulfilling the true kindness that his parents deserve. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his love comes when our parents love us, and his anger comes when our parents are angry with us. Ibn Abbas he said that there are three things that will not be accepted if its mate is not fulfilled. And from amongst those three things, he mentions the verse in Surah Al-Luqman, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and thank me, and thank Allah, and thank your parents. Ibn Abbas, he said, thus whoever thanks Allah and is not thankful to his parents, Allah will not accept from them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he reminds us that ple the pleasure of Allah is from the pleasure of the parents and the anger of Allah is from the anger of the parents. So, we should stop and maybe think about how it is that we actually are treating our parents. Um, do we find ourselves, you know, if they need something, do we find that we kind of shy away from them when, when they need something? Do we find that we don't, are we visiting them as often as they would like for us to visit them? Are we neglectful of their rights to the extent that some of them, we find them in retirement homes nowadays or they're in the nursing homes? When we argue, because sometimes unfortunately we argue, and the argument ignites between us, how do we respond? Are we shouting at them like they're the worst of our enemies? May Allah protect us from that. So compare that type of treatment to those who came before us. There was a man named Dibyan ibn Ali al-Thawri. He used to travel to Mecca in the scorching heat of the summer with his mother. And during that travel, he would stop and dig a hole and fill it with cool water. And he would say, Ta'ali ya ummi. He used to see, Rahimasiki. He would say, Come and sit down in this cool water. Come and sit down. Cool yourself. So, the relationship between him and his mother, his mother was like his best friend. If we were to ask our children today, you know, who's your. Your best friend, I think it's a BFF. Who's your BFF? Right? You know, the answer should be 
your mother or your father. But um, unfortunately today, we find that it's a little different. So what pleases our parents, in fact, should be the thing that's most important to us outside of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So long as, uh, no. as long as we make sure that our priorities are straight, that Allah comes first, but right after that, the parents are there. The scholars understood this principle, and in their lives, they would give you examples so you could see it. There was one sheikh, one of the imams of our ummah, his name was Haywa bin Shuraih. He used to give uh, classes on the roofs in front of his house. And sometimes during the, the roofs or the classes, his mother would come out and command him with something. You know, Go feed the chickens. And uh, in the middle of the class, he would complain and say, well, I'm, a, you know, I'm the big sheikh, I'm teaching my mom. And I got this. Wait for it. No. What he would do, he would stand up, he would leave the halaqa, and go feed the chicken. So, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us, we, we want paradise, we talk about it, we dream about it. So I'm just reminding you, if you want to attain that, then you should all look down, you should look down, and you'll find paradise at the feet of your mother. Imam Ahmed, he narrated, and Imam Ibn Sa'id, from Mu'awiyah ibn Jahima, As-Sudahi. His father, Yahima, he went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I would like to go out and fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have come to you for advice. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Is your mother alive? He said, Yes. He said, Then stay near her, for at her feet is paradise. So on the other side, making our parents sad or even making them cry is one of the many ways you can earn the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to be mindful of that and try to avoid it as much as possible. Imam Ahmed also narrates from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As that a man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he came to give his allegiance, his bayah. And he said, I've come to pledge allegiance to you for hijrah. And I've left behind everything. I left behind my mother and my father, they were crying. The Prophet, peace be upon him, commanded him, go back, and the same way that you made them cry, make them laugh, make them happy. Ibn Umar, عنه, said that making one's parents cry is from amongst the major sins. Shaykh Al-Qasim added to this the commentary, he said, SubhanAllah, how can we leave our parents crying? Tears that the throne of Allah shakes for, tears that unsettle the angels and the heavens, and then claim that we want to go for jihad so that Allah will be pleased with us. Go back and make them happy with your visit as you make them sad by your departure. If they laugh and are pleased with you, know that Allah is pleased with you. During uh, the funeral of his mother, Harith al-Aqli, he weeps. And when asked for the reason of his tears, he said, Why should I not cry when one of the doors of paradise has now closed? <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, we in fact, we reap what we plant in a faraway land. So a long time ago, there was a boy who was born blind, and his widowed mother, the good Muslim that she was, she didn't lose hope in her dua, and she continuously prayed, and as a result, a few years later, the boy, his sight returned to him, alhamdulillah. After that happened, she realized also that the village that she lived in wasn't suitable for him to gain a proper Islamic education. So with her son in hand, she migrated to Mecca. And there, she saw to it that 
he studied and was instructed in Quran and Hadith, the later becoming the young man's focus. So this young man would travel far and wide, taking Hadith from this one and from that one, uh, collecting Hadith from here and from there, and so much so that he compiled a book that sits next to the Quran in authenticity, forgetting not his mother that raised him well. His mother named him Muhammad ibn Ismail, and many of us know him today as Imam al Bukhari. Dear brothers and sisters, how often is it that, it's a question, so you can't answer your business to me. How often is it that a farmer is going to plant wheat and it comes out of sunflower? Say, no, that doesn't happen. Say, that can't happen. How can someone farm the seed of one plant and expect some other plant to grow? It just doesn't happen. So, similarly, some parents, they leave their children kind of wobbling in the mud of the worst of TV, the worst of music, the worst of movies, bad companionship. Then when the child reaches the 12th grade and wants to go to the prom with his girlfriend, or he enters the university and stops praying. Or, you know, he gets married to a non-believer, or he himself, or she, become, they become a non-believer. And all of a sudden we're wondering what happened. It's the harvest of what we planted. If we don't raise our children to be obedient, then what do you expect them to do? If we ourselves are not going to be practitioners of this being, then you can't expect that to come from your children. If you are not waking up for a fight, they see you day in and day out, sleeping in, then you're not going to, you can't expect them to be the Sahaba when you can't do the basic minimum things. So there are some things that we can do to kind of rectify it. The first thing is we have to learn how to discipline our children with love. And it can be done. And we have examples. You don't have to always go back in history to history, but if you want, you can find some great examples. There's the example of Hisham ibn Abdul Malik, who one day he missed his son for Salat al Juma. Looking around the Juma, he can't find his son. So after, afterwards, he sees his son, he asks the question, I didn't see you. I said, what happened? He said, oh, well, my, my, my donkey couldn't make the trip. So what did he do? He said, okay, I'm going to go back home. Now, what did he do? He said, okay, for that entire, for the rest of that year, he made his son walk to Juma. And you might say, man, that's pretty harsh, man. But he made him do that because, number one, he wanted him to understand the importance of Salat al Juma, And number two, the love he has for his son, understanding if he misses that obligation, or if he's not trained in understanding the importance of that obligation, it can lead to his ultimate destruction. So he wasn't afraid to give discipline, but he gave it with love. Secondly, the piety of the father and mother reaches the children. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he recalls the story of Khidr, and how he rebuilt the wall for two orphans. And he mentions the ayah that as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the town. Under it was a treasure belonging to them, and their father was a righteous man. And their father was a righteous man. And their father was a righteous man. It's interesting because uh, in the tafsir, of course, you can see how Allah protected these orphans because of the piety of their father. But in the tafsir, it's mentioned that this was actually a grandfather of theirs. Seven generations of Kiribati. Also, Sa'id ibn Jubair said, I often lengthen my prayer, I lengthen my salah for the sake of my son. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him because of it. In conclusion, uh, we should really stop and re reflect on the virtue of Bir al or kindness towards our parents. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said that a man asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, what deed is most beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he said, he replied, prayer on time. The man asked, and then what? He said, respecting and revering one's parents. And then what? He said, jihad for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one last thing we'll mention here, and it's important, well, it's actually two things. Number one, 
This virtue is a means by which one's sins are forgiven. And that I, which we mentioned earlier, am the enjoying of a man to be dutiful and kind to his parents. The next verse actually tells us, they are those from whom we shall accept the best of their deeds and overlook their evil deeds. They shall be amongst the dwellers of paradise. Respecting our parents and lead us to gender. So the prophet, peace be upon him, uh, he was heard saying amongst his companions, may he perish, may he perish, may he perish. And they asked him, who, O Messenger of Allah? He said, he whose parents attain old age in this life, one of them or both of them, and he does not enter paradise because of his goodness towards them. Um, the goodness towards the parents doesn't stop when they die. So, one of the men from the Ansar, they came to the Prophet and they asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, is there anything left of my beer to my parents that I should present to them after their death? And the, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, yes, there's four things. So number one, pray and ask forgiveness for them. Number two, fulfill their pledges. Number three, be kind to their friends. And number four, maintain the ties of kinship that come from only their direction. That's what's left from the beer. Um, Amr ibn Abdullah ibn, uh, ibn Zubayr, he said, My father died and for an entire year. I did not ask Allah for anything except that he forgive my father. So remember, brothers and sisters, we won't stop here, inshallah, for the time. Remember, uh, as you meet your parents today, the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, فَفِيهِمَا فَجَاهِدْ And he do jihad in your kindness, in your kind treatment towards your parents. Allah, forgive us and forgive our parents. Reward them with the finest reward. O Allah, elevate their position in the hereafter and in this dunya. Make that which befalls them an expiation for their sins. O Allah, grant them residence in Firdaus, the highest level of Jannah, with the Prophets, the Siddiqeen, and the Martyrs. Ibadullah, inna Allah, ya'u bil alim wa ihsan wa ita'i bil qurba wa yanha al ahshan wa al-munkar wa al-raham ya'idhukum na'allakum tadakkaroon uthkuru Allah al-azim yafu'akum wa shkuruhu yazidkum wa istaghfiruhu yafir lakum وَاتَّقُوهُ يَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مَخْرَجًا وَأَخِي الصَّلَاةِ الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله يا للصلاح يا للصلاح يا للفلاح يا للفلاح القامة الصلاة القامة الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أحمد لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله استوى استقيم واعتدل وارحمني وارحمكم الله